So again, the key to waking up, your mind is not who you are. It's a scientific fact that what we think, say, and do is initiated long before the neocortex. Our awareness happens in the deep gray areas of the brain, milliseconds before we are consciously aware of the thoughts. Your arshna, your, your conceptualization process is reactive. It's not creative. It's reactive. It comes after a long chain of biochemical processes that take place. So on the PDF that you're going to get as a download, it says from the Scientific American, what neuroscience says about free will is we're convinced it exists, but new research suggests it might be nothing more than a trick the brain plays on itself. So your ashna and the not self conditioning is that if you can, because it's connected to everything else in the body graph through chemistry, through hormones, if you can align to awakening that that I inside of your head, the small I, I call it, the I that thinks, that for it thinks it is, that that is not who you are. You can start to witness the magic that happens when you surrender to the form. Okay, this is the heart and soul of the dilemma of anybody who wants to wake up or be conscious, be awake, be aware, love yourself. The mind always wants to make decisions based on strategies it developed through its relationship with the open centers. I'm not good enough. Nobody loves me. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to prove I'm the best. That's a not self thought process. It can never be the inner authority, your mind inside of your head about yourself because it's too polluted with information, with conditioning over your lifetime. That conditioning that started from birth to seven year old, that is crystallized inside of your body, that you have a lot, you, we all have this uphill battle to get over this identification with I. Okay, so I, I need you guys, if you're going to move forward with this and you're really dedicated to this, this experiment of living your truth. I need you guys to wake up, to not use the mind to say I and therefore do, but to use the mind to recognize the not self conditioning. So again, my mind thinks and my body is doing. So the things that are really important to you that really do matter to you are the definition and the design. However, because you have openness in your design, those things are ignored by the mind, the things that are defined, because the mind is interested in the genetic imperative. The mind is interested, attracted to what it's not. The mind is always conditioned by the open gates in the design. And that's one of the things I'm going to use with you guys when we look through your charts is speak from the language of what the mind is thinking and what you can safely discard as a reason for doing, as a reason for action, a reason for deciding. But your mind, if you're deeply conditioned, oh, oh, how it thinks. This is a review from human design, um, from living your design, the basic fundamentals. I want you guys to try and commit this piece to memory, yeah, because it's so important for you to recognize the not self-conditioning field. That genetic imperative, that openness to conditioning, how we bond, it's always going to ba be based on genes. We're attracted to difference in that genetic imperative to reproduce is the first law. In order for us to, to, to bond and create, we have to have this connection with others. And it's not just about creating more babies, but even in business, in relationship, we're always going to be attracted to somebody who has a different perspective. So it's never personal when we're attracted to somebody who is different. The diversity is attractive to the genes. Sameness is a dead end street to the genes and your body needs to reproduce. So your body is part of this global human cell and it's always looking for difference in order to make, give strength to the gene pool. The passenger you as a witness consciousness, you as an eternal soul, you as someone who is observing this life process are not the thoughts you think you are so much more. And when we look at this wisdom, what, what the eye inside of the head is thinking, this wisdom is there as an outer authority for others. Your open centers, Profit potentials, my friends, where the open centers are, or wisdom potentials, these are where you are receptive and adaptive. You're adaptable. You're resilient here, but you're also sensitive. You have potential for wisdom 
of others, about others in any open center, anywhere where think about, um, you know how a moth is drawn to a flame? Imagine a moth drawn to a flame. Your mind is that moth. The flame is the openness in the design. The open centers where is where your mind likes to alight. Now, when somebody comes to you, they've got a, a defined anything where you're open, you are amplifying that potential. So you have a wisdom potential there. Are you taking in clean clarity or is your mind distorted by trying to get something from the other rather than aligning to your decision-making strategy? Have I been recognized? Have I been invited? Am I emotionally clear? Do I have a response? You know, following the body, no matter what. That's my hope for you guys in taking you through the body graph mechanics so that you can understand from a fundamental basis how this all works.